In page 120, the author of the facts takes leave of his readers by assuring them that on the re-examination of his statements, he sees no one fact recorded, which is not on the best authority. His subsequent appeals to credibility are doubtless of a very powerful nature in his own estimation, but in alluding to the publications which have appeared relative to the transactions at St. Helena, he should have admitted that a part of what he designates under the epithet of falsehoods were contained in official statements prepared at Longwood under Napoleon's own eyes. And although I cannot think it possible for the public to allow such an anonymous defense as his to influence its final judgment upon the important question of the fallen emperor's detention and treatment, I am reluctantly prevented from also terminating these remarks by a desire to put the nation in possession of some more details connected with the system of government established by Sir Hudson Lowe, which are, as observed, in a former page, not only intended to serve as a reply to all this author's panegyrics on the lieutenant general's amiable qualifications, but in answer to the gratuitous observations contained in page 121 of the facts where this writer almost unprecedented effort to deceive his country is crowned by a statement that the treatment of Napoleon Bonaparte in St. Helena, so far from being capricious or annoying, is in every respect with proper regard to his own security, mild and gentle, that, as I have shown, the minutest attention is paid to the most trifling of his whims and fancies, that, as I think I have satisfactorily proved, his tables abundantly and luxuriously supplied, his stables filled with the best horses in the island, that every accommodation is afforded to him in his residence, which is pleasant and commodious. Having perused the foregoing paragraph, matchless for effrontery and falsehood, the reader is earnestly requested to keep it in mind while he accompanies me in the following detached particulars selected from that mass of materials which my residence at St. Helena enabled me to collect. In July 1816, Mr. Hobhouse sent a copy of his works upon France to Lieutenant General Sir Hudson Lowe with a request that it might be presented to Napoleon. It was, however, withheld and concealed from the latter's knowledge until a discovery of the circumstance was made by an officer of rank who had seen the book accidentally at Plantation House. Finding concealment no longer possible, Sir Hudson Lowe then said that he had detained it because it had not passed through the Secretary of State's office, and also because Lord Castlereagh's political conduct was freely censured in it. Sir Hudson Lowe observed that he had no idea of allowing General Bonaparte to know that works of such a nature were permitted to be printed and sold in England, much less to allow him to peruse a publication in which Lord Castlereagh was spoken ill of. The discovery made of the transaction by the gallant officer alluded to was purely accidental and without guile, having seen the work upon the table at Plantation House and heard there that it had been sent by the author for Napoleon. He mentioned the circumstance unthinkingly at Longwood in the course of conversation, not supposing that the governor of St. Helena would have deprived his prisoner of the slender satisfaction which he might derive from the perusal of a work that gave due credit to his military talents. This piece of inadvertence, however, was considered by Sir Hudson Lowe to be a so heinous in nature as to cause him to make a report of the affair unknown to the officer to Lord Bathurst in which the conduct of the person complained of was represented in a most disadvantageous light as may be inferred from the declarations triumphantly made by both Sir Hudson Lowe and Sir Thomas Reed two to first passengers on their way to England who made inquiries about the officer in question oh Colonel Blank He's done for. When you arrive in England, you may find him there, but by G, you will not find his name on the army list. Fortunately, however, the present illustrious commander-in-chief does not allow himself to be influenced by such characters, and the gallant officer still remains upon the list of that army, of which he is a distinguished ornament as the many honorable wounds he has received in the service of his country bear ample testimony. A similar report to the discredit of an artillery officer 
was also made by Sir Hudson Lowe because he had presumed to listen to Las Casas, reading an extract of Count Monton's letter of the 23rd of August, 1816, and was attended with a similar result. 